Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a digital rebar video uh, coming to you. Uh, this is a special one. We're talking about troubleshooting. Um, and some people have asked what our dev process is. And so I wanted to take a minute to talk about the dev process when I found a bug that I have to fix that I think is pretty straightforward to fix. Um, so this is the video for you. If you want to know the best practices or at least good practices, uh, I think everybody on the team does things a little bit differently. So. This is a good start for you, at least to see how we do things uh, when it comes to developing code. And in this case, I've been building an environment where I wanted to run an Edge Lab test install, uh, testing the Helm charts to install OpenFast. So a whole bunch of stuff, doesn't matter that much, uh, except that there's a bug in that something changed in Helm, they just released a new version. And so when I run the uh, install, which had been working great, it, it fails a task and in failing that task so this is going to happen all the time as you know code ages and if you look at the code normally this would come down install this and then it's telling me wait a second there was an error unknown flag dash dash filter so this command that we were using in the code and i'll show you where that is um, failed because we were expecting to be able to do a helm action that probably in the latest version is missing and you'll notice in here, I know what version of uh, K3S I'm using, but it doesn't look like I know what version, here we go. Um, but I don't know what version of Helm I'm using. Actually, it looks like maybe right here. Um, yep, that is. So it's telling me I'm using Helm uh, 2.16.3 and what commit, which is super handy. So I have all this information, but something changed to make this one command not work. So what I want to do is figure out what's going on and show you what it looks like to troubleshoot that. So there's a couple things I want to show you. One is I'm going to pull up, this is my editor, and I want to come back up here and find, I was working in task library just recently. I want to come back to edge lab. It's going to be under E, edge lab. So here is the code for edge lab. Uh, and specifically the task we're looking at is this Helm charts task. And I can search in this for filter. And this is where it's calling that filter command that's failing. Um, I'd let you go through the command. I'm, I'm sort of helping, I'm jumping, jumping quickly to find this. In this case, I don't want to look at this as YAML. I'm actually going to look at it as bash. So I'm going to get my highlights right. Um, here, I'm actually working with the template inside of the uh, task definition, which is compact, but it does mess up your line orderings and numbers a little bit. But here you can see I'm calling this Helm list JSON with this charts looking for length zero and that dash dash filter is no longer uh, applicable. It's not really a problem in this here because what I can actually do is take the JSON output and look at what's going on. And so let's do exactly that. Uh, what we're going to do to troubleshoot this is I'm going to get a little bit of data um, I'm going to assume filter is not available anymore, and I'm just going to do a Helms list JSON. So what I want to do is get the output and then stop. So I'm going to say exit one. It's pretty normal for me from a debugging perspective, just to want to interrupt the task while I while I collect some data. So here I'm going to do a Helm list uh, JSON zero uh, output JSON. And I'm going to say, and um, we're going to pipe this to JQ so it looks pretty. Uh, and I'm going to echo, and I like to put my name in or my handle in uh, while I'm coding so I can easily see those things jump out at me really fast if uh, I leave them in. So that shows me I'm putting in some debug logic. Um, super handy with that. And then uh, to make sure that outputs, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to echo the statement itself just like that. So here, what we've got is a helmet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the data that I'm looking for and see if I can filter out that that chart length um, beforehand. Um, I'm just jumping. I haven't really troubleshoot done any troubleshooting at all, but I'm jumping right into get collecting some data uh, so I can see what to do about that. And then I'm going to go to Bash. I'm already in the directory, so Digital Rebar Provision Edge Lab, and I want to say DRTCLI Contents Bundle Edge Lab. That creates the YAML, and then I want to upload that. Um, so here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep that and then I'm just going to always, because this is my process, 
I'm going to bundle and upload. So I'm going to do those together in a command, which is handy. And then I'm going to say contents um, upload edge lab. And that will update the system. Now I could get a little bit faster. Uh, sometimes this takes some, it's fast enough, but I could actually be a little faster if I said update like this, update edge lab. Uh, and if I did that, it would, um, it's the exact same thing. The problem with the update is it doesn't work if the bundle doesn't exist yet. So yeah, that's a good start, good thing to know from a starting starting perspective. All right, so now that I've updated that, now I'm ready to rerun the task. Normally what I would do is I would come back to machines, click play, say go, and that would rerun the task. I don't wanna, that's a lot of clicking and we have some shortcuts that allow you to avoid that. So in this case, I'm back at the task. Notice here I have something that can turn on debugging so I get additional logging or I can just hit set run, uh, runnable. Runnable is the same thing as clicking runnable from the machines list. And in that case, what it's done is it's actually gone in and run that task again. So I can come back. It's going to fail, remember, because I put the failure in. Here's the vehicle. And uh, you'll notice it, um, huh, it's getting really confused because it thinks there's uh, Tiller should be in here. And this is version, uh, should be version three. So something in here somewhere has decided that it's looking for Tiller, which is not the appropriate thing to look at. So there's not, there's no, it's not even installed correctly. So here I'm going to jump back and we have a Helm install and I can go back and look at what that looks like and see to see that everything is going on. So here I've downloaded Helm. Uh, it's thinking that it's installing Helm 3. So somewhere in my logic that pulls down the latest version of Helm is incorrect. Um, when we're supposed to be getting latest and instead it's getting 2.6. All right, so uh, I'm gonna keep troubleshooting this on video because uh, this might be interesting, but you have now just seen our development process. Literally, I'm building code, I'm running it, I put an exit in while I'm in a single task so I can quickly recycle and I hit uh, runnable and jump back and forth. Uh, if you're really clever, and uh, don't even like that much waiting. Uh, I have on occasion gone in and said DRPCLI machines, um, the name of the, the name of the machine, so name, uh, in this case it was edge. I'm actually gonna show you what this looks like. Edge, where's my machine? Edge lab test, so if you're really impatient, you can go in here, edge lab test, that looks great. And then I can just say runnable, I think that's the command. And if it's already runnable, it doesn't matter. Aha, uh -huh, wasn't quite right. Let's see, actions. All right, I don't, there's, I need to actually do a update, runnable, true. Might have to wrap that. Yep, and some JSON. That's easy enough. There you go. So if I do that, then you're going to get the extra action and it's going to automatically cycle the machine. So if you're impatient, like I often am, what that will do is it will automatically go through the full job cycle and set it. Set it. You'll still need to do a refresh. Um, but that will at least get you in a point where it's generating a new one. So I clicked, um, I, I clicked, um, I, I typed it in the background and then you could see it automatically went through the whole process. So it saves you the click over, uh, you know, at some point it might be important for you. Um, and you could actually then download the job. You could actually keep expend, extending this um, if you want. I found that that's, a, that that's an unnecessary uh, optimization for the, the way I like to work, but that's pretty much the way it goes. All right, so back to troubleshooting. So what we're trying to figure out is our, our Helm charts install over here. For some reason, when it goes to get the latest version of that Helm chart is pulling it pulling the wrong thing. Um, 
which is a little frustrating. So in this case, this is where we are downloading this uh, Helm chart latest repos. And then we are literally getting the tag name, which is going to should be latest Helm version latest. So they must have done the release and something got got weird. Oops, that's not what I want HTTP. All right, here's the file. Let's see where latest ends up. And it looks like they have not correctly tagged latest as latest. Hot dog. This is a unfortunate thing. They uh, stopped using the word latest in their uh, releases. So let's see what, where if we can find v3. v3 dot, I think 3 just came out. Wow, all right, something other, something bigger changed in this. Uh, so you, just so you believe me, Helm releases v3. And there is now, there should be a new release. I just saw it. This is 310, three days ago. Um, which is great. But now the logic that we were using um, is not able to find the 3.0 release train. Wow, they fixed a lot of stuff. All right, it's a big release. And I'll tell you, this is there's no, no shade in this. This is, it happens when people come out with a new release. Often we have to update at least something um, to make all this stuff work. In this case, it's a little frustrating in that the file uh, Helm releases uh, list is not um, giving us the um, data we were hoping for. So let's see. Tag 310. We can certainly do that. I, what I'm resisting here is I don't want to hard code in um, what those pieces are. And it might be that they just forgot to tag latest when they did this, or I guess, wait, 216 also three days ago and I have a feeling our three our, uh, oh shoot 2163 2163 the idea of latest it's possible that they have these tags a little confused uh, let's find out it looks like they just did away with the um, latest tag Right, so latest is actually now tagged at 216, not at um, 31. So my assumption is I'm gonna alert Matt that this is the case so that they can fix the tagging and it will be correct. And in the meantime, because the way we do the version sets, I can come back over here and um, in the cluster, yay, I can edit here and add in the Helm version, which we actually have a variable for, Helm version. And I should be able over here to pick, yep, 310 and hit save. Looks great and then come back over here and run. And this is gonna fail now because I added the debugging <laughs> code, um, which is exactly right. So over here, let's come back and strip out this, this debug code. Don't need any of that. Excellent. Have to upload it. Got it move all this stuff out of the way. Yep, the machine went to runnable all by itself. And still not happy about the, oh, of course, because it actually installed Helm, uh, the wrong version of Helm here. So no amount of setting the version is gonna make that correct. Um, so what I need to do here is I'm gonna destroy the machine 
I'm doing this in cloud. I'm not actually on an ed lab, Edge Lab, which is all good. And I am going to uh, just create a new uh, video machine, set it to machine create. It looks great. Add that. Uh, this uses the Ansible workflows behind the scenes, so I can context set the runner, and it's going to go create a machine in Linode for me to play with. In the meantime, I'm going to, oh, and then I'm going to set the profile over here so I can install OpenFAS. I haven't done a video about that. I'm about to. This has to work first. And then um, over here, I'm going to go ahead and Uh, delete this cluster. First, I'm going to pick up this parameter and then delete it. Great. And I'm going to go into my global results and add the, ooh, I have a lot of stuff in there. Version, Helm, version, just like I did. I'm just putting it in global so I don't have to uh, remember it every time I go through and delete this cluster. So is this machine destroyed? Let's make sure it's destroyed. It hadn't destroyed it yet. So we're, I'm just, I'm just removing uh, that cluster so I can delete it. Oh. And uh, one thing to note is if the machine is not runnable, even if I switch workflows, I still have to tell it to start being runnable, which is fine. Profiles, now I can delete this profile. Over here on the machines, I'm removing the, that machine. IP address is gone, that means the machine is deleted in the background. This machine is now almost spun up. And I can create a brand new one. Let's go back and create a new machine. All right, so now, sorry, I'm doing two things at once. I'm resetting this machine by creating it and destroying it and creating it. And then this one is a brand new, fresh machine, new IP address, everything looks great. So over here, I'm gonna take this machine. I've told it to do open fast, so I can come in and install Kubernetes on it, K3S specifically. It's gonna be super fast because it's already downloaded, so all it has to do is download the right versions of things. Uh, hopefully in this case, that means downloading the right version of um, Helm, which we're going to check on in just a second. Most of the K3S uh, install time is actually asleep. Uh, it has to wait. Ten. I just let it bake for 10 seconds. Um, I could put a loop that would shorten that, but I haven't bothered yet. Pull request welcome, by the way. You're welcome to tune this up. Um, Helm install. Let's see, in this case, um, it should it should go in and download. Let's see what it's found. Uh, that's disappointing. So this is going to fail again, probably, because I think we keep going back to the same Helm version, which means I have a bug in the Helm version. Helm, Edge Helm charts, Edge Helm, same bug, I bet. Two and three. Uh, and the reason why is because I'm not being very smart about this. K3S, let's see, do I have the Helm? Helm, I'm going to remove, yeah, it's not version, so I'm just going to remove that file. Should have done that the first time. Now I'll show you another debugging tip. So in video here, I don't want to just pick up where I was. I actually want to go back to, um, I wonder why it's not letting me do this. I should be able to go back to the um, Helm install stage over here. Do there have to be an edit for this? No, I don't. Uh, let's see, I need to actually go back, all the way back to install. Sometimes it lets me, um, go back and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure what the what, what the difference is uh, from that perspective. I have to look at the logic because sometimes I can jump backwards. 
Um, but never fear, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just destroy this one. Excellent. And remove the profile. And then over here I'm going to uh, put the pro... Uh, see, I don't need that. I'm going to do the install on this machine instead. Hold on, first I have to delete the, the profile. The reason I have to delete it is there's some data in there that's um, already assigned into that cluster. So this is literally building a brand new cluster. Let's see, K3S install, brand new machine, go. Once again, now we're doing the install. While I'm waiting for that to kick in, I will destroy this machine. So I don't need it. And tell it to be runnable. Okay, there you go, and it's destroying. So this is a very common pattern for me. I've got two machines that I'm playing with, and I'm constantly resetting one, uh, so I have a clean working environment. Uh, if the process is a little bit longer, I'll have three machines just to make sure make sure it goes. Uh, so in this case, I can go check things. Here's Helm install. I think I just missed it. Here's the Helm charts stuff going. Still using the wrong binary. Uh, and that explains why the filter flag is wrong. And I don't understand why I am seeing the wrong binary. So in a case like this, when I'm troubleshooting, I'm going to go to the Helm Charts install, and I'm going to say, you know what, I'd really like to see what you're choosing to download. Um, and so I'm looking for Helm version. Um, this is the latest Helm version. Otherwise, it's telling me to use this Helm version. And then it's saying download echo and so installing from Arch. And then it's supposed to be giving me the Helm download URL. So let me see what my Helm download URL is. In this case, it's just using the defaults. Get Helm.sh. Interesting. So in here, where we're actually doing the download, download uh, Helm download which is defined from Helm download version, all this stuff. So we need to see, go back over here, Helm install. And this data should actually be in this, in this case. So what we're showing here is still downloading 216. So for some reason, when I'm looking up Helm latest version, it's not actually pulling the correct version. Go back over to Profiles, Global. Did I not save Helm version? Edge Lab, Helm version. All right, so I have a different bug. So what it's telling me in this case, I'm looking using Helm version. So if I look at the code over here, using Helm version, Helm version, Helm version, Helm version, uh, latest, that seems really strange to me. So I'm going to do that. I'm taking out Helm version. So now I can actually check to see what what's going on. Helm version here. Uh, where is that getting set from? Oh, all right. That has to be found in a lookup. It comes from up here. Helm version latest. Edge lab Helm version. So it looks like this logic that I built is not correct. So I want to test to see if this, this stuff is working correctly. And so what I'm going to do is to test it, I'm going to say exit one here so I don't go any further. 
and then I am going to add in a little bit of code. So echo um, using Edge Lab. So now we can figure out what's going on. So in this case, what I've got is I'm going to start putting in some code in here. So this is using the crib help, help version. So this, this branching logic uh, I added because we had overloaded um, in crib, we, I had named things as generic uh, helm slash version, which is not what I wanted. So this is using the uh, general Helm version from Helm slash version. So the, the challenge with this is that when you do this, that you've taken over the namespace for Helm version, which is not a good practice until things get settled and baked. So what I really should have been doing is uh, setting it um, in a more persistent way. And I don't know why. Okay, good. And so here, let's just, uh, we're going to exit. I'm going to leave some of this debugging code in and some, some of it is going to get removed. So this is going to be the removed part, vehicle. And we're just going to say Helm version. So here, what I've done is I've added some useful debugging in, uh, information anyway. So we're going to keep that no matter what. And over here, we are going to um, see what the Helm version is at the end. So now, What I want to do, go back to machines. This machine I'm going to destroy because it's busted. Excellent. And I'm going to work in this machine. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm going to upload, I'll show you. I'm going to just upload the container. Perfect. So that's uploading my new code. I have not created a machine yet, so let me create the machine. Gonna take a moment, and while I do that, I'm gonna go into files and remove the Helm file. That's because I don't want that there. And I'm gonna go into machines, and I'm going to unassociate this profile. Oh, I, there's another way. I'll show you a way I could do that. So I'm gonna just set the open FAS. So when you click this button, this forces, this replaces all the profiles. So I can take whatever's there and just set it in one click. Super nice. Um, and this is destroyed also. So I'm going to go ahead and create that so I have a backup. And over here in profiles, I'm going to remove this profile. Yay. And we're still waiting for the creates to occur. Looks pretty good so far. I've got, this is a general cluster I'm using it to play for a couple things. But machine create delete is super handy from that perspective. You can literally just create machines and make them go. Um, and you saw me go through the ad process for, for how this works. So. Okay, one of the things to remember is I'm gonna be stopping. So right now I'm just testing this one block of code. So I wanna put in this exit. The reason I put the exit here is it's so easy to restart a job from that perspective that I want to be able to get just the part code I'm trying to test and then stop. This allows me to do that. Um, we have some other tools that you can use to do that. That's sort of a brute force uh, way to do it, but it's pretty simple since it's so easy to restart exactly in the right spot uh, and just pick up where, where we want it to go. Cool, so this one's ready. I'm going to have another one for testing right behind it. K3S install. Here we go. This looks great. Once again, K3S is installed. So the main thing we're waiting for is the 10 second uh, pause. One of the reasons why I hate pauses in scripts, because there's really very little reason to wait a uh, full 10 seconds. And so uh, if I was uh, in a different mood, I would actually go in and, and 
put in a loop that just checks every second to see if K Kubernetes is responding instead of waiting 10 seconds. That might save everybody on the planet 10, 10 seconds every time they play with this. So once again, patch is accepted for, that's a nice little first patch type of thing to try. All right, Helm Lab install. Remember I told you it was gonna fail and it did. So in this case, yay, here we go, using Edge Lab Helm 3.10. And then for some reason, look at that, it takes latest. So what we've got in this code is uh, this variable is not getting reset. So inside of this block, it is not resetting, it's not keeping the value. Um, so I suspect that's a scoping problem with the way Golang temp templates work. Uh, let me see, Golang template, um, uh, variable scope. And this will, no, yeah, this, this is actually really confusing if you're using Golang templates, understanding the dot um, and where things go. But um, this I think is what's going on for this. And so I don't know exactly why it's not uh, figuring that out. This actually answers our question. Uh, yeah. So the way I approach this problem might not actually work the way I, th oh, well, inside of a range, I know this. Um, and inside of range, ranges are weird because ranges do have different scoping and the dot is reassigned. And so you need to be aware of that. That burns me all the time. Um, yeah, and this is exactly what's happening. The outer scope is not changed. And so this is like link hell. We're going back and forth. Um, <laughs> and I'm not happy with any of these as options. So that means that the strategy I had for this is not going to work the way I was hoping. So we need to find a better strategy, not a, not a bad thing. Um, Yeah, I think what we actually need to do is is pipe this together from that perspective. Um, so in this case, I don't I don't actually care that much because I'm not planning to use the other parameters. We are um, only in Edge Lab at this point, so the idea of preserving the other. Um, is not that important to me. Uh, but actually, I think what I can do is do this. So I think what we're really doing is we're, we're just saying this, uh, and then we can do the logic. My word. All right. This is going to take me longer to figure out from that perspective than I want to figure out in the video. Um, but that's exactly the way things work. And sometimes Golang templating is a little bit confusing and I'm just gonna end up building a logic. Come back and check and see how I fix this because uh, it's certainly uh, not gonna be that hard to fix, but this is what it's gonna look like for me going through troubleshooting. And I don't wanna have to take you down through this, um, this deep of a research when I've already shown you what I was really hoping to show you, which is the tips and tricks that we use to do some troubleshooting um, for template building and running workflow. So this gave you the whole thing. You got to see me figure it out, use break exit, um, look up stuff, you know, figure out where, where there's problems going on, how I figured out where there was a problem going on, how I update and run and manage the code. And then when I'm done, I will create a pull request 
uh, back with the changes so that everybody will benefit from having this right. And then I also need to tell the Helm people that they miss tag latest because I bet people all over the internet are unhappy with that because that's baked into their Helm install scripts. Another day on the internet. It depends. If you have questions, please come in and join our Slack. Ask questions. This is exactly the type of stuff we want help with. Um, love to know what's going on. If this video seemed way down in the weeds, uh, check out GitHub uh, Digital Rebar Color Demo, where we actually have a, a training to get you into the first level of this. This is level, this is 300 level stuff. So uh, check out Color Demo, which takes you through a lot of the basics that I assumed you already knew. I should have told you that right at the start. This is Rob Hirschfeld. Signing out.